Eagles. The Lakers move on to the seventh seed, get the win 110-106 over the Pelicans. Lakers will now play the Nuggets in the postseason. Meanwhile, the Pelicans still alive with that chance to play the winner of the Warriors and Kings. However, I think the storyline in this one is Zion Williamson. Yeah, you see his numbers, 40 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists. However, did exit the game early after landing awkwardly on a dunk. Still alive with the chance, hoping that it's good news getting their man back. And we are now joined by CBS Sports NBA reporters and analysts, as well as our Beyond the Arc host, John Gonzalez, Bill Ryder. Fellas, this was an exciting matchup between the Lakers and Pelicans. Pelicans, it started off a very close back and forth game, and at one point, Pelicans trailed by as many as 18, rallied back in this one in the final minutes of this game. John, I'm going to come to you first because we spoke a little bit pregame, and you were on the Lakers on this game, but what did you make overall of this matchup in the West? It was much closer than I thought it was going to be. I mean, when the Lakers went up 18, Kiana, I thought, okay, well, this is it. I mean, this is what we've seen from the Lakers against the Pelicans all season long, and they're just going to smack the Pelicans and and go off into the playoffs proper. And good on the Pelicans to not lay down in this one. I mean, we have been waiting Zion Williamson's entire career for a game like this. This was the biggest moment of his professional career, and he turned in in that moment the biggest and best game of his career 40 points was a season high for him he was one off his season high on rebounds with 11 and then the injury comes and you just hate to see that because they have been really waiting for zion to develop and emerge like this in this situation but now they're gonna have to try to win a game on friday against whoever emerges from that other matchup and by the way they have now lost six in a row on their home floor this is devastating for them if they lose seven they're going home bill yeah, and the devastation, is, as John talked about, is the fact that Zion finally has this, not a playoff game, it's this weird purgatory game, but this amazing performance, this career coming out party in a game that feels like a playoff game to get his team to a playoff game. Played 70 games this year, was healthy, was dynamic, was awesome. He's incredible for most of the game, and then he goes out at the end, and we don't know, as we've talked about, what the injury is, but he looked really frustrated when he kind of came up lame. He went straight to the locker room, limped to the locker room, and it just underscores how cruel and unfair life and sports, which reflect life, get, can be because there's no telling what happens in this basketball game. If that comeback gets completed, if Zion is able to stay on the floor, and John's right, that, that the Pelicans put up a fight, but really, and it was some role players too, but Zion put up a fight because not only did he have this game, CJ McCollum, who doesn't have an excuse, was brutal on this evening. He was just awful. And, and Brandon Ingram, and I know Brandon Ingram just came back from an injury and played, I think, 20 or 23 minutes. Minutes in, in the last game to sort of try to get his legs back a little bit and get the rust off. He was awful. So in terms of the star players, it was Zion carrying this team and being dynamic, and he goes down to injury. Credit the Lakers, they got the win, but it would have been really cool to have seen what might have happened if Zion could have played at the end of that game, the end of that fourth quarter. This could have been a completely different story if Zion was available for those final minutes of the game and healthy and available. And you talk about he carries the team, of course, 40 points for him, but then you look at the next closest score, it's Trey Murphy with 12. And the rest of his team, Herb Jones with 10. You're looking at Brandon Ingram with 11. Larry Nance with 10. Alvarado with 10. He absolutely carried this team. It could be a completely different story, but now the Pelicans, fortunately, are still alive. They'll be facing that next team of the winner. But what's you guys' level of concern? You see what happened to Zion. I'm not going to say that the Pelicans fell off once he went out, but you noticed a little bit of a change. What's your level of confidence, Bill? I'll come to you first. If Zion isn't available in the second game i mean it's uh, very very low here's the thing right so so the right answer is exactly what john gave you earlier before this game began which in this case the right answer was the lakers but anything can happen in a single game even with zion it, it just stacks the deck so much against the pelicans if zion for whatever reason in a couple days is not able to go out there and play against the winner of uh, the Kings Warriors game that we're going to talk about later. Can, could CJ McCollum and, and Brandon Ingram figure it out and have a great game? And could some of those other guys you mentioned, Tiana? I mean, Murphy had some huge threes in this game, hit big shots. Could that New Orleans defense, which was great at times in this game and has been great at times over the course of the year, step up? Sure. It, it's always possible. But if there's no Zion, there's very little chance. And if there's no Zion, it's almost certainly going to be the winner of the later game who, who wins that game. He is their fulcrum. He is their catalyst. He is their superstar. And we saw what he was about and what he did for that team when he was playing in this game and helping lead that comeback. 
and we saw the outcome once he went down to injury. And the Lakers didn't play that great down the stretch. There just wasn't any help out there. There wasn't anybody out there to generate offense, offense for New Orleans. So I guess in theory, there's a world where the Pelicans, John, are, are able to win that game without Zion, but I certainly wouldn't be betting on it. John, I want to look at this this Pelicans team, and let's let's hope, we're going to hope for the best that Zion's available, but let's say potentially maybe he's not. Looking at these potential matchups between the Warriors and the Kings, what do you see as the best matchup for New Orleans? I mean, they'd want the Kings. Anybody would want the Kings right now. The Kings are struggling because they don't have Kevin Herter, who's a key rotation player. They don't have Malik Monk, who until he got injured was rolling along, looked like he was going to be the sixth man of the year. Might still be, but they definitely need those guys out there. They're thin, they're depleted. That's the team you'd want to play if they can somehow win tonight at home against the Warriors. If they get the Warriors and they don't have Zion Williamson, you might as well pack your bags, plan your trip to Cancun, have a good time in the offseason because you're cooked. Bill mentioned it. I mean, aside from some of the role players, right? Like, Trey Murphy was pretty good tonight. Jose Alvarado's playing on no ankles. He was pretty good tonight. Herb Jones defensively is always good, but really is kind of a zero offensively. Beyond that, you got a, a no-show from C.J. McCollum, who was previously when Brandon Ingram was out really good, and then Brandon Ingram came back in this last game, and then tonight C.J. McCollum no-showed. Jonas Valanciunas has been basically unplayable against the Lakers. That basically only leaves you Zion, you have to pray to the basketball gods who are ever fickle that this man will come back because if not, uh, a once promising Pelican season, and Bill knows, I w I've been on the Pelicans all season long. At one point, they were in top 10 in offense and defense this season. And since the end of the regular season, they've just started, I don't know, the wheels are coming off here. Like I said, they've lost six in a row at home. They got one more. They got at least one more home game on Friday. We'll see how it goes. Fellas, we talked about this a little earlier that the Lakers had a lead by as many as 18. Gave that up. Pelicans coming within. They tied it up at one point in this one. Was there any concern for L.A. when we're, they were coming down that stretch, Bill? Were you worried at all? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends. Look, I live in L.A. and John, John does, too. And I got a bunch of Lakers fans who are blowing my phone. I'm like, this is great. If we lose, <laughs> we don't have to play Denver. And no, you don't risk elimination on your season. So unless you want to buy into that craziness, there was absolute concern. I thought LeBron looked tired in the fourth quarter. He, he had a great game. I mean, he was he almost had a triple-double. He was astounding. He was great. Anthony Davis was great. D'Angelo Russell was great. And then they just kind of, they kind of lost, they lost the thread. They, they lost the narrative a little bit. And that, it's both. The, the Lakers let up and Zion, really, I was going to say the Pelicans, but really Zion just sort of took over. But yes, th there's a reason in, in, this, in this NBA season, especially in the West, where there's thin margins, why the Lakers are playing in the play-in and not somewhere else. And remember, Anthony Davis and LeBron James played a lot of games this year. It's not like some past seasons where they were playing in the 50 games each and the Lakers had to cobble together other rotations, other other players. Their two superstars played a lot of games this season. There's just a reality that, and I think it's I think it's marginal, but they're just not as good as some of the teams that are above them. And you saw that in this lack of this inability to close out a game that is, for all intents and purposes, like a game seven. It's, it's not a playoff game, but it's like one. They had that almost 20-point lead. They didn't hold on to it, and it does showcase a little worrisome trend for the Lakers that they're just – they're not the team they've been in years past. But, man, you still got LeBron. You still got AD. You always got a chance. Yeah, I was definitely sweating it a little bit in the fourth quarter. But then you remember also the Lakers now 38 and one when uh, leading going into the fourth quarter. So yeah, it got a little choppy there, got a little dicey there. But these guys do have that muscle memory on how to win. And part of that was look, LeBron James has been excellent to close out this season. Little a little choppy for him as well in the fourth quarter. But he also went for 23, nine and nine tonight. He's still LeBron James. And then you got a really great game from D'Angelo Russell. He had 21 points, was shooting the lights out early had a couple of major threes, including one to help close out the game. And on top of that, he made a great steal with about a minute left when Jose Alvarado should have just taken it to the bucket instead of trying to kick it out for three. So unlike the Pelicans, their supporting cast actually played pretty well tonight. So we'll see what happens. The Lakers got a tough uh, matchup ahead of them when they meet the Denver Nuggets, the defending NBA champions and the guy who's about to win another MVP, Nikola Jokic. But the Lakers are starting to get it together here. So credit to them. Hey guys, I will. I do want to give this game at least a little bit of credit because if we consider their matchups going into this one, all of them have been decided. They've been extremely lopsided. I think the closest one was about 16 points. One of the, the first ones of the year being decided by 44 points. They kept managed to keep this one very close. I think a lot of credit does go to Zion in this one. But now, uh, Bill, you did say you got LeBron, you've got AD. That means you've always got a chance. Well. 
Well, they have a chance against the defending <laughs> champs, as John just mentioned. That's what lies ahead. Facing yeah. the Nuggets, Nikola Jokic, you're saying the mm -hmm. MVP, your words. Um, looking at this series and what lies ahead for L.A., Bill, do they have a chance? Yeah, the Lakers have a chance, to, a great chance to take it to five or six and then go to Cancun. <laughs> I mean, here, well, here's the thing. So so I, I'm obviously not wishing for this, but but injuries can happen. But barring an injury to the big guy, to the to the soon to be the guy that I voted for for MVP today, Mr. Jokic, or Jamal Murray, because he's critically important too. Yeah, I, I think the Nuggets are winning this series. I think everybody thinks the Nuggets are winning this series. Do I think the Lakers can push them more than last year? Maybe. I mean, I actually probably don't think it, but I just said they have a chance. This is a tough draw, and this is why. This is why you have you cannot play this game against the Pelicans if you're the Lakers for anything other than to win. You can't take the chance of losing a playing game on Friday and then and then having your season be over. But the Nuggets are a different beast altogether than if you were playing Oklahoma City, who were one, or if you got to the six seed like the Suns and you're playing the Timberwolves. Those are good teams, but they're they're beatable. This Nuggets team is the best team in the Western Conference. I know what the Celtics are on paper. I would fear the Nuggets more than I even fear Boston right now because they are proven in the postseason. Wow. Are the Lakers going to go out there and fight? They're going to fight. Are they favorites against Denver? They're not. Are they going to win this series? I doubt it very much. Yeah, this is why Bill was getting texts from all the crazy Lakers fans about, hey, maybe they should have tanked this game at the end <laughs> against the Pelicans tonight so they can end up dodging the Denver Nuggets in the first round. It's just a really tough draw, Kiana. I mean, the, the Denver Nuggets are, they're a different type of team in the postseason. They were great after the All-Star break. Going into the All-Star break, they were kind of like playing with their food a little bit. And then there was that moment where uh, Nikola Jokic supposedly texted the rest of his team and said, hey, we got to get, get it together, guys. And then they really got it together. And they might have even ended up with the one seed, if not for uh, kind of also playing with their food in the second to last game, the penultimate game against the uh, Spurs on Friday. But there's a reason why everybody fears this team. Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray arguably having his best season as a pro. That two-man game is lethal. Aaron Gordon is an awesome defender. On our show today on Beyond the Arc, we were talking about KCP potentially. I don't even know if Bill put him on the all-defense team. He should be in consideration at the at the very least. They ju there are just so many different ways that the Denver Nuggets can beat you. And on the flip side, it's got to be a ton of Anthony Davis, a ton of LeBron James. You're going to have to get virtuoso superhero performances from all your supporting cast, and then you might have a chance if you're the Lakers. So you're telling me there's a chance. No, you, but yeah. no, literally, <laughs> you're saying you're going to need an incredible performance from LeBron, a incredible performance from AD. You're going to need, you said, what, a, a super superhero performance from this team to match up with this Nuggets team that has the weapons. Their players are, I mean, bar none. Yo, could you talk about Murray? Um, I, really quick, John, I know hindsight is 2020, but do you, are, we talked a little bit about this before. Should the Lakers have won this one? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can't mess around with this. I mean, you if you end up losing it. this game, look, again, they would have been on their home floor <laughs> and they would have gotten whoever comes out of it. But then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, now, now we're getting like we're white knuckling this thing a little bit. So, yeah, they had to win it. Yeah. Tell that to my crazy. I got a guy who keeps. I'm like, hey, bro, stop calling me. I'm on CBS Sports HQ. I don't want to talk about why the Lakers shouldn't have won the game. These Lakers fans are ridiculous right now. Yeah, it's brutal out there right now. But you know what, you guys, I, Bill, you said it best. If you have LeBron, you have AD. There's always a chance. You never know what can happen. Chances just are a little slim, fellas. This is a lot of fun. I appreciate the time. And if you want to hear more from these two, well, you got to check out the Beyond the Art podcast. They're joined each and every day by Ashley Nicole. Cole Moss, and they're breaking down the biggest storylines from around the NBA. Beyond the Art podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts.